I'm always bad on Wednesdays, but this I like I've done my work, I've done what I need to do, but I've been so tired all morning. Oh, let me. Sorry, got to pause you. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Um, I need to get chat going up. Hi, Selkoy. So what, I don't we're know, starting Surya. on chapter 16 today? Yes. Okay. That is correct. Um, I actually want to... Are you going to start with stickers? Yeah. Okay. I have to step away for a second because I was just about to throw something in the oven, but I'll be right back. Go for it. Hey, hey Chinaza. Hey, Catherine. Somebody wake Alon up. He didn't take his first quiz yet. He took the second quiz, but he didn't take the first quiz. Also, Jeffrey. Somebody, somebody wake up Jeffrey as well. He hasn't taken either. Hey, Leah. Ugh. Oh, man. You can't shake Alan? Like you can't hide from him? <laughs> well, if he makes the team, uh, State's going to be interesting when we have to wake him up super early in the morning. Um, What did I want to look at? There's something else I wanted to look at. We'll, we'll wait a few minutes here and get other people in. Oops. Yeah, I could tell his, his sleep hours are definitely off. Um, just based on the, like, he's been in these, he's been in a lot of the chats and then didn't take the first quiz. And I was like, uh, uh. All right, we'll go ahead and start the uh, start the medals. We're only doing perfect scores still. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be the case uh, for today. Stickers, we got to figure out digital stickers. I have not yet figured out digital stickers, but right now we're only doing. We usually do top three in each category, but since for the most part top three in each category has been perfect scores, we're only doing perfect scores right now. But again, I think that's changing based on the scores I've seen so far today. Not that they're bad. It's just we only have one hundred so far uh hello Hamit. all right uh cat's cradle uh you can give us pictures of stickers i could there's like digital stickers i'm sure there is there, there's a way we can do this um and so these are updated as of this morning so if you we relate can do badges in schoology we can do badges there you go that's not bad jizz honors elise <laughs> ashith Venmo us money, no. Huda, <laughs> Saloni, and Umer. Umer. Umer's going to need to tell me how to pronounce his name. I can give stamps on the spreadsheet. Okay, we can do that. So those are our honors. Congratulations. Very good. Well done. The Hashmi siblings, once again. Uh, perfect, perfecting. Uh, yes. Clap, clap, clap. Yes, very good, very good. I like that. Uh, in the Scholastics, we have Anthony, we have Arnold, we have Catherine, uh, we have Erlene, we have Emery, we have Josh, and we have Megan Wang, and that, that's it. Good job, yay, look at all those Scholastic 100s, wow. Spicy. <laughs> um... As of with the with the uh, with the uh, first two days of quizzes done, we had I think eleven or twelve people still uh, averaging a perfect score, which is very impressive. Uh, in the varsities, we only had two today uh, or yesterday. Excuse me. We had Leah and we had Rachel. Clap 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 clap. Uh, for those of you new to the decathlon, one of the key uh, one of the key things you must know how to do is clap. We clap a lot. Uh, lots of clapping going on. Um, all right, so that's our stickers for today. Uh, our third place varsity would be Conrad. Uh, but again, I'm going to start implementing the non-perfect score stickers uh, tomorrow, uh, hopefully. That's not a guarantee. That's just a hope. Forgot to read for the meeting. How long did it take? Uh, uh, which? This meeting? 
the the quizzes for today the quiz for the i mean the reading is normal maybe slightly longer uh, than the previous ones because it's technically it's six chapters but chapter 21 is minutes? a line yeah i'd say i read it right before this in like 15 minutes although what i did i would i would calling it reading is very generous reading yeah i uh i scanned reading? yeah i did some academic scanning a quick browse <laughs> exactly uh this stream brought to you by coca-cola zero sugar um with cherry uh coke sponsor me please Oh, see, I was drinking a Diet Dr. Pepper cream soda mix thing. Oh, that sounds so good. They have that now. It's a real thing. That's nuts. That's wild. They, uh, they, those, those chemists, those chemists are, uh, going crazy out there. Are you getting paid for this? I mean, technically, very technically, I am currently getting paid at this moment. Who? Uh-oh. Ashith got, got timed out. Ha, <laughs> ha. Excellent. Uh, I'm actually going to start using the titles of the of the uh, chapters here because they are very descriptive at times. Um, <laughs> rest in peace. Uh, rest in peace, Ashith Nightbot has has claimed another victim. Uh, if you guys haven't been in the WAP review chats, which I would assume most of the seniors have not been. Uh, the amount of people being nightbotted is substantial. It's the best part of the stream, frankly. All right. Uh, so uh, we're back to kindergarten here. We're go we're back in the research lab. He climbs up the four granite steps of the uh, of the of the lab. Not three, not five, not six, but four. Um, uh, it's underdoored brick. Uh, it's six stories tall. So let's do those. I want to do all those. Put those on here. Four steps. Uh, unadorned brick. I mean, not painted, just like a natural brick facade uh, and six stories tall. Uh, and then there's two heavily armed guards. Uh, what are the colors and uh, what are the colors of the badges here? Uh, Miss Pefko's got a badge and Breed's got a badge. Do you paint brick? Have you been in our classrooms? <laughs> uh, Leah, who's is black? Black and pink, yes. So who's is black and who's is pink? <laughs> Breed is black. Pethko is pink. Uh, and they say each say something different. Uh, her says confidential. Uh, and Breed says... Uh, it's top secret, which is very good. Conveniently, they have badges in the color of Dulles Decathlon colors. That, that is true. Uh, years ago, I read this book, and we uh, we, we picked out those colors. <laughs> Maybe uh, that could be a thing we do this time. Oh, I like that. That could be good. Confidential top secret Dulles Decathlon. That's right. I like that. Um, all right. Uh, so, um... Uh, Dr. Bree puts his arm around uh, uh, Jonah to show that he's with him. It's kind of a weird, awkward moment. Um, Without actually touching him, that was fun. Yes, he did the he did the he did the um, the 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 hover. Yes, uh, we got the hover hug uh, from Dr. Breed, which again, like scientist alien. Yeah, no smile, no smile at Jonah. Humanity fails to support Jonah. This is true. Um, there's nothing funny about national security. Um, so, um, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Breed talks to Ms. Pefko and says, Hey, ask Dr. Horvath to explain something, uh, and he'll get a, he'll, he'll probably give you a nice clean answer. Uh, and then what does, what is Pefko's response to this? Just go all the way back to first grade or even kindergarten. Yep, go back to first grade uh, and then kindergarten. I, I, for some reason, have very vivid memories of kindergarten, uh, but not first grade. 
Um, all right, so uh, all right, so they walk in after this. They 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 turn. Uh, we see the laboratory's receptionist turn something on. So I want you guys to tell me what she turns on, and then also ex uh, tell me how the receptionist is described. Crispy? It's such a weird way to... Uh, tall, tall, thin, pale. She is, uh, she is crisp. She is a crisp touch. She's not crispy. I'm not gonna do that. That's weird. <laughs> uh, tall, thin, crispy, pale. Uh, icy. You thought about a certain someone in reading that? Um, what else? Uh, okay, but what's she turning on? She's she's doing something as well. Oh, Leah, you had it, sorry. Uh, educational exhibits in the laboratory, which I find weird. Yeah, maybe Chinaza, maybe I can. Uh, I see um, lights twinkle, the wheels turned. Oh yeah, flax bubble. That's the that's the things that are happening in the um, in the in the exhibitions. And what word does Miss Pefko use to talk about all these uh, educational exhibits that Doctor Bree gets really really mad about? Chinaza, you're on it. It's magic. And Doctor Bree gets very mad at that, and he calls it what kind of word? It's a it's a it's a museum. It's a it's an educational exhibits within the laboratory. So yeah, it's kind of a museum within the lab, I guess. Brackish, which uh, Miss Johnson, what does brackish exactly mean? Do you know? Um, isn't brackish water where it's a blend of salt water and fresh water? Yeah, that's what I thought as well. I wanted to make sure. Yeah, brackish is yeah. It's like. Is it? It's like it, I think it's mostly just salt water, right? Or is it the? Is it when like? It's like where they convene and right. you get that mix. Yeah. But in the, it doesn't really make sense in this context. It really. So maybe there's a second meaning. Yeah. Um. Uh. So then they talk about, and then Doctor Bree says, "Hey, these all explain themselves. It's not magic." Um, unpleasant or distasteful. Unpleasant or distasteful. There you go. Moats are brackish. Sure. I, I guess. Have you been in a moat before, Chinaza? How would the moat get salt water, though? Yeah. Icky. I uh, like it. Icky. Motion yeah. carried. Yeah, I like icky. Um, you've seen some moats? Um, uh, and then he says, yeah, he doesn't... That uh, They don't want to mystify, right? They're not here to, to do magic. They just want to... They're just doing science, you know? Um... And so, yeah, he's saying they're doing the opposite, the antithesis of magic um, there and stuff like that. Um, and we move on to chapter 17, which is the girl pool. Again, I, I like I, the chapter names are like I, I like thinking about the chapter names now because like immediately when I when I read the girl pool, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. This happens. <laughs> uh science is magic it is it is we've been watching rewatching uh breaking bad and um then kind of talking about the chemistry and that they're like it's magic um <laughs> chanaz is already on it uh the accordion accordion pleated christmas bell um which to me is like those kind of like crunchy like uh uh uh, like foldable fan things almost with the bell on it. Yeah. Right. Or it opens up in the shape of a bell. But, okay. you know, you know the ones you get at Party City where you buy them and they're flat and they've got the two pieces of cardboard and then you put the two pieces of cardboard together and it makes a 3D object. Mm. They, they do sound crunchy. Yeah, they would be crunchy. They're definitely crunchable. Um, and then they talk about six months without a fatal accident, uh, and they're talking about that because his uh, Dr. Breed's secretary, uh, I believe it's, yes, uh, uh, Naomi Faust, uh, who are we introduced to here, uh, is on a table uh, setting up the, the, the decorations. 
right? Um, and then she says, uh, don't worry, even if I fall, I'm indestructible, and if I fall, what's going to catch her? What does desiccated mean, like dried out? So in this case, a very desiccated lady, it usually, I would, I would assume, means kind of thin, like very thin and, and wrinkly. Right. Yeah. Uh, she would, yes. She says Christmas angels are going to catch her, which is uh, directly in contradiction to the previous uh, magic discussion that Doctor Breed had. Um, so you know, uh, and then of course he says uh, they've been known to miss. Uh, so that's that's rough, which makes sense for him. Um, and then uh, they uh, talk about. They talk about two other papers are kind of hanging down from the from the clap from the bell, um, and what are the what is the message on the two large pieces of paper that are hanging in Doctor Breed's office or wherever this is? I'm assuming it's his office. Peace on Earth. And goodwill toward men, which is um, in the context of what is being produced at this laboratory, uh, A, the atomic bomb, and B, what's going to happen here in a second, uh, is wild. Is wild, is, is very, you know, I think satirical and humorous, right? Like, you're supposed to chuckle at yourself kind of thing, right? Um, so there we go. Um, so do you think the secretary being named Miss Faust has any allusion to Dr. Faustus? Who is Dr. Faustus? Uh, it was a play. I want to say Marlowe, but I've been wrong before because he seems English and I feel like the play is German or set in Germany mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it has to do with, I don't really remember, it's like demons and the devil and... I don't know, so raising the dead and immortality and stuff like that. Hmm. I feel like the devil is definitely involved somehow. Okay. I mean, I, I don't, I think just since she's not really involved in the, like she, her herself doesn't have a whole lot of characterization. Um, uh, Surya here is saying it's based off of German stories. Uh, are we talking about Miss Faust? Or are we talking about the play that Miss Johnson? I think Dr. Faustus is what he's talking Dr. about. Dr. Faustus. Okay. I, I don't, I don't, I, I just don't think she has enough to say in this story to necessarily make her devilish. No, no, no. I, I, I want to say it's been a long time since I took my random English literature class in co college. Um, but I want to say he makes some kind of deal with the devil so that he doesn't die because he's... I don't know. It has something to do with that. There's the devil and, and things are involved. But it's like the idea of man is condemned to die. Okay. Oh, okay. That is interesting. Um, and especially if, if making a deal with the devil and you make the, the devil be, I don't know, Dr. Breed or Dr. Honecker. Yeah. Right, and that kind of relationship. Uh, but and if, if you have, you know, if you have her being the one raising peace on earth and goodwill toward men, it's sort of an allusion to this. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. I, it could be a reach. Yeah. I mean, I think all the things we're talking about are reaches. Anything we've we've projected off of this, um, uh, dehydrated uh, Christmas. I found a weird thing, like it made it uh, thinned out. I guess uh, he talks about it being festive, uh, and as Chinaza already said, I believe it's Chinaza. Uh, the chocolate bars as the as the reward for the pool girls or the girl pool, um, and then um, that's tradition, right? Um, and then who uh, who do the girl who do the the girls in the girl pool work for? It did say it mentioned soothsayers and necromancers. Well, that sounds like a video game I'd like to play. It was, <laughs> was Pandemorto. It was bread of the dead. Um, Generally speaking, when the Wikipedia is boring and confusing, so is the play. Yeah, uh, which may be why I don't remember it as well as I could. So, so, yeah, some people said uh, a scientist, which is halfway right, but really it's anybody with a dictaphone. Uh, anybody who has a d access to a dictaphone is who the girl pool works for. 
Uh, for those of you who don't know what a dictaphone is, it is basically like an early recording instrument uh, where you could record uh, you saying stuff into it and then it could be played back. All right. Um, and so, yeah, they listened to the faceless voices of scientists, uh, which was brought in by the male girls, and then they would get chocolate bars from Dr. Reed. Um, and then says they serve science as well, even though they don't understand it. Um, so that's that's great. Well, and then he wraps up with God bless them, everyone, which is an allusion oh. to... Uh, Anyone? God bless them. Everyone. Anybody? Anybody got that reference? Uh, Chinaza Pefko is not a pool girl, as far as I can tell, but I might be wrong. Uh, God bless them, everyone. Is um, oh shoot, it's a it's Christmas a, Carol. It's a Christmas. Okay, it is a Christmas Carol. Yeah, which like Tiny Tim. Yes. Oh yes, us everyone. Yep. Um, so they're all in the, they're all in the in the Christmas spirit around there. It seems like. Um, chapter eighteen is the most valuable commodity on Earth. Uh, Chinaz, to answer your question more detail, I believe Miss Pefko is one of the scientists' direct secretaries, uh, Doctor Horvath's secretary, uh, as opposed to being part of the 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 pool. Um, so while they sound like they have the same job in a lot of ways, um, also I think there are some slight differences there. She listens to her, yeah. She does do pool girl things, right? But I think that's just like the role of a secretary um, and maybe other scientists who aren't Dr. Horvath or at Dr. Horvath's level don't necessarily have a secretary like that. All right, so the most valuable commodity on Earth. Um, well, her boss wouldn't have a dictaphone because she would be in his office. They wouldn't need that. Yeah. Yeah, he can just write it down or tell her what to write. And she'll write I it think to... you're supposed to get the impression that if they have their own private secretary, they're they're higher up in the hierarchy of, of the Foundry and Forge company. Whereas if they don't, you know, they just use a general pool of secretaries, which is pretty common in those larger uh, structures at this time. Yep, definitely. Uh, it, it, I'm always thinking back to Mad Men with this, like this, a lot of this stuff here, which, you know, uh, is of the era because uh, like sure. the 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 art directors like the artists uh don't have secretaries but like the the um the the guys who go out and get contracts and then don draper right and and all those guys they do have secretaries and stuff um so yeah uh he gets into dr breed's office uh he, he talks about his mental health still not being there because he's still hung over um and um uh, what had been suffocated what well, part of his brain was suffocated and what was it suffocated by Ashith, you've been back for a while it was a five second ban <laughs> five seconds yeah that'll just, teach you just so there's no spam so what part of his brain was was cut off was suffocated and what was it suffocated by Cat's fur smoke, uh, cat uh, uh, fur fur smoke, and something else, and booze. Uh, 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 what am I writing? Booze and cat smoke, uh, and it suffocated his public relations part of his brain, which we all have. Uh, the public relations part of the brain is suffocated by booze and cat smoke, right? Um, which is such such specific imagery. Yeah, <laughs> like, the, the the cats the the cat fur smoke thing is so weird. Uh, well, the, that's the second time we've seen that description. Yes, which I don't. Yeah, I don't know what it comes from. Uh, uh, and then so every question that he asks implies to Doctor Breed. Uh, what 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 is he implying with his que line of questioning? Also, I'm sorry, Ashit. I don't even know what you got banned for. I think I saw for a split second and it didn't look bad. But don't type it again. You'll be banned again. Yeah. <laughs> if you wrote Han Hanukkah, that might have gotten you banned. Yeah. Uh, he basically uh, is implying that scientists are criminals involved. The scientists who helped build the bomb uh, are criminals involved in mass murder. 
which, well, you know. Uh, that is up for you to decide. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't like scientists. Um, oh, he was typing in all caps. That might do it. Uh, and then so he... he he, uh, and then Dr. Bree kind of lists off a bunch of things that he accuses, um, that he accuses Jonah of wanting him to say, uh, or getting him to admit. I'll be right back. My oven's beeping. Cool. One is vulgar. <laughs> no, it's not vulgar. It's a, it's a term of the, of the time. Uh, so we'll start with that. Uh, narrow boobies. Uh, which at the time did not mean what it means today, uh, meant kind of like an idiot, right? Uh, blue-footed birds. Uh, what else does he want? Uh, does he want them to, uh, 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 admit that they are heartless? That they are conscious, conscienceless? Yes, thank you, Leah. Very good. You got around. You got. You got around the night bot on that one. Uh, oh, those are types of birds. I did not know that. Uh, indifferent. Yeah, indifferent to the fate of humans, and then even quite possibly not members of the human race. Right, that's a lot of things he wants to. He thinks he's missing. You missed my amazing joke. I missed your joke. No, Chinaza is is telling me I missed his joke. What Honaker actually is about the birds. I'm ah. I'm confused. I didn't know about them. Yes, I didn't know that that boobies were a type of bird. Um, like blue-footed boobies. Yeah. And red-footed, yes, yes. Breed is very nice. Sure, sure, Heyman. Um, uh, so, uh, and then uh, Jonah comes back. He's like, "Hey, that's 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 a little harsh." Um, and then he's like, "Well, I thought you were after this kind of fair, objective biography of Dr. Honecker." Um, uh, and then instead, he's like, "No, you you think about we're mad scientists and stuff like that." Um, and then. Uh, uh, Dr. Breed asked him where he got that idea from, that they're mad scientists, and who does he say he got that idea from, or where? I shouldn't necessarily say who. That might be giving it away. Uh, so, uh, the mad scientist idea comes from Newt. That's right. Uh, it comes from Newt. Newt Honecker, uh, the little man. Uh, and uh, in fact, they they kind of again poking at him uh, uh, at his height. Uh, they ask uh, uh, Jonah uh, asks him uh, asks Doctor Breed how small he is, and how small does he say he is? Smaller than an umbrella stand. Yes, no bigger than an umbrella stand. Um, uh, and Chinaza to uh, yes, he, he he calls Frank and uh, Angela uh, normal. Um, which uh, if you've read the rest of this book at all, uh, not even if you've gotten to the introduction to Frank, Frank is certainly not normal, and I would argue Angela also very much not normal. You know, I was just thinking about their names. Okay. Felix. Yeah. The, like the Latin word for lucky. Okay. Or the base root for luck. Angela, obviously angel, which we have those religious themes in here. Right. Newton, right. Isaac Newton. Sure. Maybe. Sure. And Frank is Franklin, right? Yeah, I would, I would assume so. And if he's, if he's 12 and 45, that means he's born in probably around 33 when Franklin Roosevelt is a, you know... Being sworn in as president, mm -hmm. I just wonder if there's anything there. Yeah, there could be. Me just thinking aloud. Yeah. Um, Angela is just weird. Angela, um, Angela's kind of got the whole Honaker thing going on. I think of not 
having any awareness of others except for like the things that concern her uh there's this particular example she's crying at like the unfairness to her and her family at the same time that like this horrid monstrosity is occurring and that she's li like she's at this place where everybody around her is dirt poor and she's mad that her father didn't get like what he deserved and it's just it's it's very like it's the tone deafness you expect out of like kind of a you know an elite class who never really necessarily interact with the common folk right um not that i'm suggesting that angela is by any means a sympathetic character because this whole family is a, a, abominable yeah but you do have to kind of think that she's sort of a victim of her time and circumstance oh absolutely um yeah the the kind of uh the almost the stepford wifeian life that she lives of, of trying to take care of her father and the family because that's what she's supposed to do right um they talk about like how she loved playing the clarinet and then kind of stopped doing all that so she could take care of dr honaker and stuff um but we're getting we're getting way off course uh as usual sorry no no <laughs> no did a left turn. you i did that you didn't do that you just you were like you also had this other observation on top of you were like let's just take another left real quick <laughs> <laughs> i'm already we're already 10 miles down the road uh she uh her her last name uh 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 so when it says the address harrison c connors harrison connors is her husband and that's just the name the address name that you and at that point right you would probably send the at uh, the uh, uh mail to the mail to the man of the of the house right yeah it was very common in that period for women to sort of um lose their identity within marriage and so they would be referred to as you know like mrs and then their husband's full name and it's like she is not a real person anymore yep uh and so as we get into this interview dr breed kind of goes on a rant about how scientists are misunderstood uh this misunderstanding um and um he then kind of goes off about other scientists at other companies and what are the examples that he he points out about the scientists at those companies like what are the things they are trying to look for Yes, Breed is very emo. I agree. Nobody gets me. Nobody... Everybody else is just a Philistine. <laughs> Nobody understands what I do. They don't actually do research. They're just improving. You're right, but like, what are some of the... Yeah, there we go. The cigarette filter, uh, the softer tissues... Which facial tissues are just... We, ca we call those tissues at this point. Uh, cigarette filters, uh, tissues, softer tissues. Um, and I think it's then, just a distinction between face tissue and bath tissue. Uh, and then... Um, yeah, right, right, right. Uh, and then... Um, what's, the what's the last one? Lager lasting house paint. Uh, and then, um, okay, and so then, yeah, somebody pointed out, uh, they actually do, uh, uh, at, at General Forge and Foundry, they do, oops, sorry, uh, pure research, pure research, right, like, they're actually, they're just trying to explore the, the, uh, possibilities, right, uh, and then they talked about, yes, at the very end of this uh, paragraph, they talked about improved windshield wipers. That's kind of the fourth one as an example. All right, so what he's, yeah, what he's talking about here is like the difference between, um, uh, you know, trying to come up with chemical or physical or biological improvements or like innovations versus like, we need to make this company more money. How do we make this company more money? Right. Um, industrial hack technicians is a heck of a name for for researchers industrial hack technicians okay um <laughs> if he was a book of as then he would have become a wolf at that statement what does that mean a, a furry i'm very confused uh Uh, ah, he would have been howling. <laughs> Wait, I'm... 
Did Bo Boca known as Hal? Did I miss something? It's a line. Oh, it's a line for the book. Oh, I'm I'm not. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I did not. I did not get to the end of that that page. Um, that's very good. Uh, and so he talks about the most valuable commodity. I'm. We got to get out of this chapter now because I've just embarrassed myself. Uh, the most valuable commodity on earth uh, is is knowledge, right? Uh, um, new knowledge. I would point out that here. Dr. Breed is acting like he's somehow morally superior because of his pure science. But look at the things that have come out of <laughs> their pure science. Mm -hmm. They're they're all very destructive. Mm -hmm. So the more truth we have had to work with, the richer we become. But what are riches if you're dead? Right. Which, spoiler warning. Uh, well, well I mean, if you get an atomic bomb dropped on you, you're not likely to survive. Yeah, yeah, you can get an atomic bomb. That's very possible. Uh, uh, I meant for the actual book. Um, well, I mean, they're the ones who created the bomb and other things that we haven't discussed yet. Yes, 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 yes. All right. This is this is the chapter I really thought I got, like, in. I really got into this book, uh, was the No More Mud chapter. Um, so, uh, uh... And so, kind of, so Jonah starts poking at this idea of pure research, and, and, and he's like, so wait, nobody even suggests to anybody else what to work on? They just work on whatever they want? Um, and then, uh, he, and then what does uh, Dr. Breed say to this? What does he say? Uh, what happens when people suggest stuff to researchers? And yes, I am Mia. This is a real lecture. It's not really a lecture. It's more, hopefully, a discussion. You can choose, right? They can choose, but what is the research? What's already happening for the researcher? I should say. I asked that. In, I asked that poorly. Hey, man. Yeah, they don't really pay attention to them uh, because uh, their heads are already yes, their heads are already full of projects. Uh, their heads are already full of projects, so no need for them to pay attention to that stuff. Right. Um, and so, uh, and so he, he goes on and he asks about, hey, did anybody uh, suggest stuff to Dr. Honecker? Uh, and then he talks about admirals and generals, uh, um, uh, in particular, who thought he was a magician, going back to that word, right, that magic word, uh, that can make America invisible. Um, and, um, and so, uh, let's see here. Uh, and then, um, what does so so they're asking him to come up with all these kinds of ideas, and then uh, and then uh, Doctor Breed's like, but the things that they wanted him to do were just impossible right now. Like, there's no way they could work with the knowledge that we have. Um, and then the Marines come to him, and the Marines want him to do something about what. mud yeah so we got a marine general wants to end mud which is um now that now that again now that i've read the end of the book there's that's very interesting uh icky icky mud yeah mud is gross uh and why does he want to get rid of mud mud is over party <laughs> So they can move easier, right? Yeah. So they could. So the. So they're not bogged down, uh, in the mud. Like a bog. Ha <laughs> ha. Um. Yeah. The Marines are tired of it. They hate. They hate. They're sick of it. They were sick of carrying cumbersome objects. Uh. And so. So not only this, right? He also wanted something small, right? He wanted something small that they could kind of just carry under their their. You know that they didn't have to lug around. Um. And, and bring with them to end, end mud. Uh, and how, what did Dr. Honecker say to this? Yeah, Janazi, you're pointing out, right? They want to carry light stuff.
Yeah. Uh, he says... Yeah, he says he could do uh, a single grain of something. Uh, he could create a single grain of something uh, that could make uh, uh, in infinite infinite expanses of things in, uh, disappear, right? Um, let me let me rewrite this. I I. Surya, what what is happening there? What is happening there? All right, so okay, so Doctor Honecker says it's possible, uh, and it could be in infinitesimally small, um, and that could uh, wipe away all mud. Uh, but he also says a lot of other things it could get rid of. All right, what are the other things it could get rid of? Surya, don't teehee me. Quicksand. That's one of the like six things. Swamps. Quicksand. Creeks, swamps, pools, mire. Quicksand. Swamps. Pools. Mire. Creeks. Um, and marsh. Yep, that's the six, I believe. Yep. Um... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I got seven. Uh, muck is the last. Is the first one. All right. So he said they could turn that all into solid as that desk. Um, and yes, his his desk is kidney shaped, which I don't I don't know what that means. Uh, and it is sea green. That's very sixties. Uh, Bob Tuba, Bob Tuba, thanks for subscribing. There's your five second ban. <laughs> um ooh two messages deleted 64 according to this thing that i got here they deleted all of his messages that's rough uh yeah he's got a really oh, wow. ugly desk um and then he says that one marine could carry enough of this stuff to do that under the nail of his little finger right um and then, and then Jonah goes like, "That's impossible." And Doctor Bree goes, "Well, sure, it's impossible, but that's the brilliant thing about Doctor Honecker." And what does he say is the miracle of Doctor Honecker, which again, kind of harkens back to our magic uh, discussion, right? Uh, the miracle of Felix. Miracle like, has more of the religious connotation. Totally, but it's also like kind of the non. Uh, you know. Inexplicable yeah. wonders. Mm -hmm. He always approached old things in new ways. Yeah, he he never said no. Basically, like it was impossible. Uh, he always looked at something and said, "Well, maybe." Right, um, and then he can also explain it. Right. Yeah, he was able to explain uh, this idea to him. Uh, and then Dr. Breed is going to explain to, uh, to our, uh, protagonist here, Jonah, uh, our, uh, his, uh, what, what, uh, uh, Dr. Honecker wanted to do to end mud. And that brings us to our next chapter. Ice Nine. Ice Nine time indeed. All right, um, so uh, they talk about, uh, Dr. Breed starts talking about the way, there are several different ways uh, that liquids can, uh, can crystallize. All right, there's there several different ways that liquids can crystallize and, and when they can, and they lock in these orderly rigid ways, right? Um, yeah, via atom stacking, right? Um, and they can stack in different different ways, right? Uh, sorry, atom stacking, right? And so, what um, what what examples does he he provide to Jonah to talk to try to explain how uh, atoms can crystallize? That's okay, sorry, yeah, I forgive you. Q 
Cannonballs. Cannonballs and oranges. Yeah, talking about how cannonballs and oranges stack uh, or packed into a crate, right? Um, and so he talks about how different two different crystals of the same substance can have very different physical properties, right? Cannonballs on a courthouse lawn. Yep. Um, That's a really specific description, and I, I I've been to a couple of courthouses in my day. They don't really have too many cannonballs hanging around. Yeah. I wonder if this is a holdover when a lot of courthouses had, like, Civil War memorials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a common thing. Well, I think also, like, um, I wonder if he had one in particular in mind. Uh, Oh, you know what? Maybe uh, it is the Ilium courthouse because of, you know, talked about how the research lab was a stockade right beforehand so like maybe it was like per you know maybe like an arsenal before that right or something like the the courthouse was or something like well, that potentially but we're gonna see it again yes we will that is very true and um, the suggestion when we see it again is that it was um widespread what cannibals on courtyards yeah oh interesting yeah ilium is wacky uh, all right, so yeah, we get to the factory that's trying to make crystals of ethylene diamine tartrate, um, and I look to write a quiz question for this quiz. I looked up what this was, um, and like found some other things. I don't know what it is still, uh, but I did look it up. Um, uh, and so they were they were specifically making crystals of ethylene diamine uh, uh, tartrate, right, uh, for manufacturing, um, and then. Uh, as somebody already pointed out, right, they, they started to, the crystals, uh, uh, the atoms began to stuck, stick and lock together. Uh, they begin to freeze, in other words, in very different fashions, right? Uh, and it basically frees into the wrong crystal formation, right? They are, they, are, they are freezing into a crystal formation that is not commercially viable, which means they can't sell it for any reason, right? Um, uh, and then, uh, what does Dr. Breed say the villain of this whole thing is? What caused these crystals to form in the wrong way? And yes, Ilium is very wacky. I don't know if I responded to that yet. A seed. A seed uh, caused uh, the... Uh, is the villain here. That a tiny grain of the undesired crystal pattern at the bottom uh, taught all the other atoms above it uh to stack in this in this in this way right a a seed crystal uh basically taught the rest how to do this all right is it an atom of a different element i don't i didn't i didn't think it was i think it was just that like the way that it froze was different than it should have been right uh because then he goes on to talk about the cannonballs or the oranges right um uh, and so the bottom, he talks about the bottom layer being the seed of how every cannonball or every orange after behaves, right? And so, uh, um, and so that basically when the, when the bottom layer changes, it impacts the top layers. He talks about the tiny grain of the undesired crystal pattern. Okay. All right, Chanaz. Okay, I got you. Thank you. Um, and so he talks about uh, there are uh, ooh, uh, Surya here is using alloys in telephone channels and industrial cleaner. There you go. Um, and so um, and so then he brings this and says, what if water could freeze in different ways? Right. What if water can be taught to uh, freeze in different uh, crystal uh, formations? Right. Um, the the sort of ice we skate upon and put into highballs, which highballs are, um, and, and Mr. Johnson, correct me if I'm wrong, there are these kind of balls of ice that people would put into mixed, like, alcoholic drinks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to, to kind of make them look cool <laughs> instead of just putting normal ice in there. Um, yeah, it's just, a, it's a, just a, it's literally like a golf ball size piece of ice. Oh, and shaped. Yes. It's also shaped like a golf ball, yeah. Uh, and so the, he starts bringing out, hey, maybe there's these, maybe there's these different ways that water can freeze. And he goes about ice one, and then ice two, ice three, ice four, right? These other ways that ice could form, it's just never been taught how to 
freeze in these other ways, right? Um, and then he, of course, gets to Ice-9. Um, and what is the melting point of Ice-9, which he says is a crystal as hard as this disc? What is the melting point of it? One hundred degrees or one hundred thirty degrees. I would say let's just say one hundred thirty degrees Fahrenheit. He originally suggests one hundred degrees. He's like, but even better, one hundred thirty degrees, right? Um, and then he is interrupted uh, by whispers outside. And who is whispering outside of the of the um, of the office? The girl pool. Yes, the girl pool go girls. And what are they about to start doing? This almost feels like, um, uh, uh, like humanity, uh, interjecting on this kind of scientific monstrosity that they're talking about. Yeah, they're whispering first and then they're going to start, uh, uh, singing here, right? They're preparing to sing, uh, I should say. Not, not singing per se. Um, yeah, they're caroling. Uh, there's a hundred of them, uh, and what makes them uh, uh, they, what makes them look like choir girls? Uh, white bond paper collars. Yeah, they got these white paper collars with a paper clip. Right, um, and then all of a sudden, how does he? How does Jonah react to this situation? Yeah, they're very good, but he's heartbroken. Yes, he is surprised and mawkishly heartbroken. Uh, uh, Miss Johnson, can you look up what mawkish means? Um, it's kind of like a overly sweet, sentimental, but also like not sentimental in a good way. Sentimental in like a sad way. Mm. I I asked you to add, look it up, and you just had it. I I'm. I do sometimes just know things. Yeah. Um, that was impressive. I've never, I've never seen yeah. that word before. Um, I, 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 when I was reading this on my Kindle, I uh, highlighted it and looked it up. Oh, it away. smart. Uh, <laughs> the hope and fears of all the years are here with us tonight is a line, which uh, I don't think is in the original Carol. It is something they did themselves, I believe. Um, uh, their hopes and fears of all the years are here with us tonight, kind of implying that their their job is like something. It, it, I feel like they think their job is more important uh, than most, and uh, but not in the way that I think th th that it actually is. It is more important than most, but for a very different uh, and uh, let's say dangerous reason. I think the original line is are met in thee tonight. Are met in thee tonight? Yeah, so comparable. Yeah, okay. Just modernized. Yeah, okay. The hope and fears of all the years are met in, yeah. Um, okay. So not yet, yeah, not too much different. All right. Um, so they pass out the, the, the chocolate bars. Um... And then they talk about their, their their trunks and tanks and howitzers wallowing in the ooze. Um, I don't really have too much to say here. He's just talking about what would happen if Ice-9 happens, right? Um, what would happen if Ice-9 happens? Or if, if... What would happen for the Marines in the muck, in the mud, if uh, they were given this Ice-9? Wallowing in the ooze sounds like me taking a bath. <laughs> Ugh. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. Everything would freeze. Yeah. E everything. Like, they kind of give you the the visual here. Like everything, right? Um. 
the pools and streams in the frozen muck, the puddles, the muck around the puddle, the puddle itself, right? Uh, everything freezes, right? And then they keep going, and the and the Marines march on, which um, really seems like Doctor Breed is not necessarily taking into account all the potential things that could freeze uh, if this was to happen. Yeah, it he, does seem weird to me that from one grain of ice nine, anything. Like it is an infinite spread. Yeah, well, I think if you, I don't, I don't think it's an infinite spread per se. I think it's no, I guess it was an infinite spread because it's it's any any like kind of water molecule, and there's a lot of water molecules around, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, Doctor Reed was very casual and dismissive about the the consequences of what he is saying right now. That's a whole new bomb. You're you're absolutely correct, Janaza. It is a whole new bomb, but th thankfully it's not it's not real, right? It's just a it's a it's a theoretical thing that uh, Doctor Honecker said could possibly help the Marines get out of the mud, right? Uh, toss it in the ocean, Chinaza. So if you toss it in the ocean, then all the oceans would freeze, probably, right? So it spreads anything that has water. Uh huh. It's what it seems like to me. My weird follow-up question is: if it reaches its melting point. Mm -hmm. but then comes into contact with the puddle over you know over there does it refreeze or since it's melted does then it it's, then change the molecules it, out it's back to water when they when it when it hits its melting point but each every area would have to be melted it wouldn't extend like it freezes in an uh, spread the the uh, if it was already frozen you would have to unmelt everything right but like if it if you un if you like I, I'm kind of I, I, maybe I'm confused by what you're what you're saying. I I just think it's weird that you know one grain of this, you know, freezes everything. Right. Well, it's <laughs> it's kind of like anything. In theory. The connect the connection of the of the water together, right? Like, you know, I think if you if you did it in maybe like a pond, right? I don't think maybe that'd be everything, right? If you drop this into a pond, yeah, the pond would freeze over, but. Uh, uh, I don't necessarily think that like the whole world would freeze over per se, right? Maybe the area around the pond that had water um, and stuff like that would freeze when it came to contact with it. Uh, but if you do drop it in an ocean, right, every ocean would freeze, uh, and then it, it it spread around the world pretty quickly, um, and not necessarily freeze everything, uh, but certainly freeze a lot of things, right? Uh, yes, Chinaz, you're correct. It does not refreeze. Um, why do they need to freeze the water any special way? So again, Surya, they're trying to freeze the water to get the Marines out of the mud, right? That's what they want to do. It says when it rains, it'll freeze. Uh, when the rain hits the ground, it'll freeze. Is that a reason? Yeah, it's really water. less it's about crack. standing water and more about mud. Yeah. How to re-solidify the mud, and then I think everything else is just kind of an after. Yes. Uh, consequence. Yep. Let it go. Let it go into the ocean. Yes. Yes, Ice Nine is Elsa. Confirmed. <laughs> um, all right. So that's the introduction of Ice Nine. That won't be important at all. We'll never hear about it again. It's just a theoretical thing. Certainly not an issue. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions from anybody? We went a little longer than usual. We did have six chapters. Uh, we did go on our, our tangents and whatnot. Um, but yeah, uh, that's gonna that's gonna do it for today. Uh, Miss Johnson, you got anything you want to add? No, I think that was pretty much it. Okay. Yes, WAP at two thirty today. Um, WAP is at two thirty today, indeed. Uh, mostly, I'm gonna be going over DBQ stuff uh, uh, for WAP today. Why did they need to freeze the water any special way? So again. Surya, going back to the cannonball example, right? If 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 you set the base of the cannonballs in a certain way, it's going to cause the rest of the cannonballs to kind of stack based on that pattern. And so what the Ice-9 is doing is it is it is freezing one molecule of H2O in a very specific way that makes it incredibly hard, uh, again, harder than the desk, right? Um, and has this melting point of 130 degrees Fahrenheit, right? And so when you create that molecule of 
of uh, freeze frozen water, every other than a molecule of water it touches, it will then freeze those in the exact same way. Right? Mud and quicksand have different structures. They do, but they both have water in them. A universal freezer would freeze both. Correct. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're... Yeah, you're trying to help explain. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the idea. All right. Well, that's good Good on that, then. I think we're done. I will see some of you guys in 30 minutes. Uh, I will see the rest of y'all tomorrow. Miss Johnson, have a great day. You too. rest of y'all have a great day as well. Bye. Bye, wait, a question? Uh, yeah, just text me on remind. That's fine. All right, see you guys.